Okay, welcome back, uh, everyone. We'll continue from where we had stopped. We were saying that um, we need to engage in prayer only then we will see God's promises fulfilled. Um, and when we look at ourselves as the womb of God, you know, I was saying um, that through our co laboring in prayer, we read in John chapter 7 that out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. L rivers of living water is a picture of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So you would notice that it's not that the Holy Spirit is only described as water. He's described, you know, in other, like fire uh, and, and, you know, in other forms, light. All these things he is described, um, and and the presence of God is described in that way in lots of other places. But here we know rivers of living water is referring to the release of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and as the womb of God, I was saying that the work of the Holy Spirit among people is very important. Okay. Why is it important? We see in the book of Genesis, when the earth was formless and void, okay, who was hovering on the surface of the waters? The Holy Spirit. So there is a function of the Holy Spirit in creating and producing. Okay, creating and producing. Hovering upon the waters, hovering. That word hovering, if you look at the, uh, you know, the, the meaning of that original word hovering, uh, it's a reproductive term. Okay, you have like a, a chicken hovering over, you know, uh, on the eggs to sort of hatch them. And uh, then there will be the um, uh, coming out of the chicks and all that. So hovering is a reproductive term. So when we read in the book of Genesis that the Holy Spirit was hovering upon the waters, one thing we can understand is God was getting ready to create. Okay, And for that creation, the Holy Spirit was you know, present there because one of the, one of the things he does is engage in creation engage in producing okay so when we pray we said we are the belly of god and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water so through the church and the prayers of the church we can expect the flow of the holy spirit the mighty flow of the holy spirit even okay and when the holy spirit is released what can you expect he will create. He will recreate. You understand? God will work in people's lives. God will work in the society. He will work in the community. Okay? But for that, someone has to be ready to see the release of the Holy Spirit. So we must become the belly or the womb of God, or we become co laborers, partners, workers with God so that God can release His Spirit through us. And as you know, the days go uh, closer and closer to the return of Jesus, we are seeing a lot of this happening, you know, prayer movements that are rising up in many parts of the world. Um, there have been prayer movements. There is an APC publication called as Revivals, Visitations and Moves of God. You know, you can go ahead and read that. And it's a very beautiful collection of um, incidents in history where people gathered together and they began to pray. So you have the Moravian Revival where people, you, you will study about all this later, so I won't go into the details of it, Moravian Revival, where people had prayer chain, you know, a 24-hour prayer chain, and they prayed for 100 years. And out of that revival uh, came, you know, a, a missionary movement where people went out of that small place called Moravia and uh, many other nations of the world were impacted. Okay, and the Moravian revival was an influence for people like um, John Wesley, uh, William Carey. Okay, these are all men we know of who have changed the course of history you know, for many nations. But where did it all come 
from if you trace back the route it will go to a set of people who were praying faithfully and the moravian revival they were all refugees these these uh, people they did not even have their own possessions they were just you know not very established somebody gave them place to stay so that's how they were living they were not some great and mighty people but they were faithful people they prayed right so when you look at all the revivals you see that there was a set of faithful people simple people obedient people they prayed and when they prayed god poured out his holy spirit the you know, same thing welsh revival when you study about welsh revival uh, you have a, a man called uh, evan roberts right evan roberts he was so diligent in prayer he was so committed surrendered to god in prayer he was a bible college student like all of you so he went back on his vacation and he said pastor give me something to do i want to do ministry i want to preach but when he started ministering the presence of god came so powerfully that you know eventually the welsh revival took place in in uh, wales but where did it all start god needed a womb from where he can release the flow of his mighty holy spirit who has the capacity to produce who has the capacity to create okay but prayer 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 like if you look at all the revivals you will trace it back to maybe a small set of people who prayed i told you about charles finney i told you about father nash what is what is the important element there prayer somebody was willing to engage with god till they saw the results and even today god is looking who will partner with me who will collaborate with me okay and when we begin to partner with god and i am also telling all of us we cannot say okay i am going to travel it doesn't work like that maybe god put something in a very simple way on our hearts you start praying about it you will journey with god with the help of the holy spirit to this place of travel which will give rise to you know the birthing of what god wants to do the purposes of god for our life the purposes of god for our you know a loved ones the purposes of god for our church for our uh, family so on and so forth okay so we must allow we must allow god to work we must be available for uh, god to release you know this kind of a mighty anointing upon us uh, and so you know that's what god is looking for today he is looking for sons and daughters who will be obedient to the call of prayer even the call of travelling prayer because this kind of a call is what has given birth to many revivals so since we are talking about travelling i told us it's very intense isn't it it's very intense so is there anyone in scripture who was um, you know intense about god and intense about having god's presence and god's blessings how many people can you think of Jacob okay why Jacob Mm yes yes true so Jacob you know Jacob comes to mind first and of course you know maybe even David like you could think of David he was also quite intense uh, about God's presence he was hungering and thirsting for God's presence and all that but we'll talk about Jacob okay we know that in genesis 32 uh, it was not a pleasant journey which jacob was taking he was going to go back and visit his own brother but he was covered with fear because um something had happened which was not correct and uh, he had you know in a sense uh, dealt wrongly with his brother and he knew that he will have to face the consequences right so all that was going on however the night when he encountered he encountered you know um, god uh, we read about jacob wrestling with god he's wrestling with god okay and he's wrestling with god in in such a way that he's not letting go of god okay now we have to understand is it possible that we wrestle with god and win do you think no chance creator of the universe almighty all powerful you know strong god 
how in the world can a human being wrestle and overpower a powerful god not happening but why do we talk about jacob's wrestling with god because what happened is it was not that he was winning in the fight what impressed god was jacob's grip he was just not leaving god what did he say i will not leave you till you bless me okay i will not leave you till you bless me i don't think he would have won the fight but the point is he didn't let go he held on till he got his blessing so that was the impressive part for god and so when we talk about travail in prayer this is what it means we have a spiritual grip on god and we are saying god we know your word you have said in your word it can be many things you know i do not uh, like uh, uh, god does not want anyone to perish so when we are praying for salvation of souls it may feel like nothing is happening but you have said in your word right that um, nobody should perish so here we are praying asking lord we want to see souls saved we want to see uh, you know a family member saved lord thank you your word says that you know your your mercy your love endures forever so even jacob in this passage if you read it carefully uh, you will notice that he reminds god he reminds god of his promises and he says you know god um uh, you said you said you made all these promises and so why was jacob holding on to god because he knew the will of god and he knew that he was not asking anything which is outside of god's will but the point is he was not ready to give up he said till i see what you have said i'm sorry i'm not leaving you so scriptures also tell us that you know god had to uh, sort of dislocate one of his joints for his grip to come out even in the physical sense but that goes to tell us that jacob's grip on god was that tight otherwise he would not have let go of god okay uh, so all we are saying is as people of god you know this very wishy washy relationship that we have with god we are not so in you know okay god if you do it's fine if you don't do it's fine you know that kind of a prayer life it cannot accomplish much when god puts a burden on our heart somewhere we have to come to this place of intensity where we say you have said i will not let you go till i see you know what you have promised and that is travailing in prayer okay so um i i will share a little bit more about uh, jacob i'll just pause for a moment here for our online students and be back with you in a second Okay, 
Right, so I was uh, talking about Jacob and his intensity. So uh, in the book of Hosea, okay, Hosea chapter 12, you know, when, when something touches God's heart, you find him talking about it in other places also. So in Hosea 12, there is a mention, there's a mention of the attitude and the the, the way, you know, Jacob came after God. So I will read it for us. Hosea 12, verses 3 to 6, it says, He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and in his strength he struggled with God. Yes, he struggled with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought favor from him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spoke to us. That is, the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorable name. So you, by the help of your God, return, observe mercy and justice and wait on your God continually. So you see there, verses 3 and 4, it says, in his strength, he struggled with God. Who is this he? Obviously, Jacob. Jacob struggled with God. Verse 4, yes, he struggled with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought favor from him. So he wept and sought favor from him. You see, that wept, why am I connecting it to travail? Because that's what I've been saying. You know, travail is that crying out. It's that, you know, sigh that you let out before you see what God, uh, you know, wants to manifest. So Jacob is engaging in that kind of a prayer here. So his struggle was not just a physical wrestling, but it was a spiritual intensity with which he had a grip on God. Now, I also mentioned to us that God was very happy with what Jacob did. So in that wrestle, what happened? God renames him, isn't it? So he's Jacob the deceiver, but what happens to him? Israel, you know, he becomes a prince all of a sudden based on God's view of Jacob. So look at that. When you engage deeply with God, God, I mean, it's not that, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to put it, but in God's mind, the destiny which he has for you, right? He declared it to Jacob and he said, no, you are a prince. That's what I want you to be. And somehow, Jacob's grip on God, you know, caused that revelation to happen where God revealed to him, this is the person that, you know, uh, you are in my mind. So he was no longer Jacob. He was Israel when he wrestled with God. And later in Obadiah, Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17, we read, But on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So notice, um, it says Mount Zion. Okay, uh, all okay? Anyone needs to go check? One of you can check, I'll just continue. Okay, so Mount Zion, okay, there shall be deliverance. Mount Zion, remember? We said, who is the spiritual Mount Zion? The church. The church is the spiritual Mount Zion. So in us or in our midst, there will be God's deliverance. There will be holiness. And it says, the house of Jacob. Why didn't it say the house of Abraham? Or why didn't it say the house of Isaac? Or why didn't it say the house of Moses? The house of Jacob shall possess their possession. See, for God, God is making a point here. What is that point? The people who will possess are the kind of people who follow Jacob's example. Did you get it? Because Jacob is somebody who went after God in prayer. He went after God with an intense grip. And he said, God, the 
there is no option b you have got to bless me that's all those are the kind of people so the house of jacob shall possess its possessions so basically the point that god is making is who will walk in the promises of god people who are intentional about you know god his um, seeing the fulfillment of what he has spoken over our lives and who don't give up in prayer and obviously when we have that kind of an attitude in prayer whatever i am talking about travail travail will happen it's a part of that kind of prayer we read right jacob wept and he sought favor from the lord he cried out to god and ultimately we all know god blessed him god blessed him okay so as god spiritual zion as individuals and as uh, you know a community uh, we too must know first of all what god has spoken and then not let go of god till we see the results okay uh, have you heard of this man called john hyde okay john hyde is also uh, you know a, a person who prayed for revival and it is said that you know he prayed so intensely for revival uh, he used to spend days and nights and you know uh, days and weeks in prayer so much of prayer and uh, he he was uh, associated i think with with the sialkot uh, revival here in india as well so once he died once he died um uh, you know people examined him and they said that uh, even his heart had moved from the left to the right you know so he had he had just given his life for prayer like intensity crying out before the lord and um you know just seeking the lord but is it possible to engage so intensely in our own strength not at all we cannot do it okay we need the help of the holy spirit and the holy spirit will help us and we will also be able to see the result so i am sharing some examples which you know sound so oh my gosh that's extreme you know should all of us become like that that's not what i'm trying to say i'm just saying look at these examples there have been people who have engaged so intensely with god okay and things have happened revivals have taken place so that's my point it doesn't mean that you know all of us have to uh, just change our lifestyle from tomorrow or anything like that okay yes uh, shaun shaun could you please speak into the mic uh ma'am can you yeah. also say that uh, hannah travail hannah travail no? yeah because she cried and prayed in you know in front of the temple when she wanted a yeah. child correct correct i think so personally i think so yeah i think it's uh, she she travailed is my understanding mm -hmm. right but yeah any anything else any thoughts any questions yeah so nina here on the chat she says praying hide so john hide was also known as praying hide and he died very early he died very young that's true yeah esther esther so when we read about esther yeah she prayed but i don't we can't say that there is any travail that's mentioned no uh so you see some in scripture no sometimes these things are not mentioned explicitly but i can draw an inference but that could be right that could be wrong so that's why it's better to say in my opinion or my view so i would say in my opinion may be she travailed is what i feel i feel but it's not there in the scripture yeah fasting yes uh, vimal but we don't read anything more no we just read esther fasting 3 days don't eat don't drink 
and she gathered the people together and uh, obviously like we know if it's in the bible we know that that fast was when you read about fasting you'll read unto the lord so the fast which esther had was unto the lord but if you look at the book of esther you don't really see that word god also but we know that she actually fasted unto the lord so prayer all those things are not mentioned but obviously we infer we say yeah they must have prayed they must have cried out to god yes anything I just want to say that Esther fasted and she did it so that um, for her, you know, to accompany her people. So I think maybe you can say, you know, she did not travail for that reason. Mm. Uh, okay. She did it for her people. Yeah. So, I mean, she didn't do it for God, God. She didn't travail in God. She did it for the people in order to help the people, you know, to come out of the world situation. They were being persecuted at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Um, uh, you know, you you made that statement, but then she's from a Jewish culture, and if you examine the Jewish culture, you'll see that people would fast unto God. They wouldn't just fast like random. Okay, we are not eating, drinking. So that's what I'm saying. Inferring uh, based on other pieces of information, you can come out with a meaning which can be most likely the correct meaning. Okay, so we could say that she prayed. The people actually kept the fast to pray and seek God. Okay. Yeah, in the book itself, I understand, Sean, what you're saying. If you read only the book of Esther, what you're saying makes sense. But if you read the Bible, then you get this uh, understanding that as Jews, they would have done it unto the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Travel? I don't know actually, because uh, she asked Jesus. So earnest petition, we said a supplication. Okay, so she supplicated. That I can say earnestly. She asked Jesus. Now, did she go into the mode of travailing or laboring? I don't. I don't think so, because uh, I don't think you know. I personally feel travelling takes some amount of time. But I don't think she would have done that. She would have just asked Jesus and Jesus responded. Went. Yeah. Sure. Okay, I think it's Matthew 15. Okay. The the Canaanite woman. The Canaanite woman. Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Yes, Rin. Yes. Yes. So the question was, uh, can we travel? Um, through praying in tongues. So, yes, any form of prayer, any form of prayer, you can travail. Yeah, and uh, usually, like we say, uh, when you study a little bit more um, in your second year, third year, uh, when you will learn about, you know, finally going out and doing your ministry, which God has called you. And some of us, we also want to be church planters. Right. So uh, when it comes to church planting, there is an incredible place for this kind of intense prayer. So generally in the process of church planting, you know, we say that first, after you identify the territory, um, one would need to spend time in prayer uh, with their team. Sometimes it's months. The duration is months. Where people pray, people even travail, because you want to give birth to the ministry that God has for you. So, yeah, you've got to engage. And uh, somehow God will bring you to this place of travailing for the birth of that church or the birth of that ministry. 
so unless we do that it's it's hard to see the the powerful work of the holy spirit yeah once again i'll just come back to you yes uh, ma'am what is the minimum like time that you need to know that you're travelling okay good question minimum time yeah minimum time uh so see in spiritual matters no shawn it's time is not uh, how do i say god is outside of time okay and uh, for the fulfillment of the promise there are many factors that come into play like our faith um you know our prayer our asking um our declare many things come into the picture so it's not like god is delaying there could be factors on our end which uh, are still not yet you know to to its perfection so i think the time is dependent on all these things so the sooner i i come to a place of faith i might see things take place uh, right away but if let's say my journey is longer i might be traveling for a little bit longer to see and in some cases as we said earlier there is something known as the timing god's timing also so even if i have travelled and god has granted i have to wait for the right timing you know uh, in the bible it says about jesus in the fullness of time the fullness of time jesus uh, was born he was made manifest the book of galatians galatians 4 it talks about it and in the greek that is kairos we say kairos that is even though we have prayed many generations could have prayed you know for for uh, certain request but there is a timing of god or the kairos in that timing things will take place you understand so all these things matter the reason i asked is because uh, to emil's question he said that um, that can be called as travelling because it wasn't there like in a particular amount of time that's why i asked uh sorry can you come again no to wimmel's question uh -huh. you said that um, that what what wimmel said the example can't be called as travelling because it wasn't done it was turned down a particular amount of time is what you said yeah yeah okay so uh sure so see what i meant is travel at least it would have some amount of time like the expression so because it was more like at least from what i read it seems more like a conversation so it wasn't like she was waiting on him and insisting that's what i meant yeah yes I, i'll just come back to you vimal prince raises his hand next so we'll go to him and then we'll come to you yeah the uh, is traveling dependent on uh, the things that we need to birth it's like the example i'm thinking of a uh, week uh, like to can example of traveling to a child birth right so if we see like there is a different a time set for each like for humans it's like 10 months for dogs it's some 8 months like that so is it the traveling is is it dependent on uh, what we are birthing for like mm. is it dependent on that one okay so is that traveling dependent on what we are birthing yeah. what we are birthing okay so i would say um prince that the travelling it's it's um, i don't know my personal opinion is it's not dependent on what we are birthing it is dependent on uh you know the the timing of god is what i will say okay but god wants us to engage like for example you know revival let's say revival now when you take up revival see we are all trusting we are all praying you know we are all looking to god but it's only when people people gather together and they begin to pray they begin to pray when we engage in the right way um, that at a certain time revival comes okay now there could have been people in my previous generation who have spent their lifetime praying but nothing happened so is it that they did not pray enough for enough time they prayed for revival but is it that they didn't pray for enough time let's say in my generation i pray 
I pray for a year or two years, and then revival comes. So what am I trying to compare? Somebody prayed for 15 years. I prayed for two years. So was my prayer more powerful than their prayer or duration? See, these kind of mathematics we can't do. We just can't do. There is a promise of God, and there is a timing of God. Okay. So whatever burden God puts on my heart, I just pray for it. So it depends on when God wants to do it. Like I said, the Kairos moments. Okay, Kairos moments. Now, everything doesn't fall into that Kairos category also. Because there are many things which can happen by our faith. For certain things, you don't have to wait. There is no Kairos moment. I can, just by faith, I can step into certain things right now. But that will depend on my faith. Okay? So uh, I hope you got the picture, what I'm trying to say. Exactly, exactly. See, I talked about Father Nash. He prayed and the meetings were so powerful, this and that. There could have been people who prayed, just like Father Nash. Maybe they didn't see the kind of results that Finney saw. But I can't compare their timings, right? These are all spiritual things. Only God knows how, what. So I think if we get a burden, the simple thing to do is just pray. Don't worry, you know, uh, how long I have to pray for this, this and that. Just engage. God will do it this timing. Yeah. Yes. Um, can we receive a blessing? Uh, uh -huh. Can we receive a blessing through travail? Yes. Without, without having a faithful and holy life. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can we receive our blessing through travailing? And, and one more thing. Okay. Uh, is it powerful? Uh, uh, to one person or to a group of people who are traveling, traveling. Is it powerful a group of people or one person one is person enough? Traveling. Okay, good, good question. Okay, without a holy life. Okay, receiving the blessing without a holy life. Okay, so, ah, uh, hmm? God, God pleasing life. Okay. See, when we don't have a God-pleasing life, it means we are walking in disobedience. You know, we are walking in all the works of the flesh. It could be pride, it could be selfishness, it could be jealousy, so many things. So, whenever we see the works of the flesh, uh, uh, Anand, it's like that's a hindrance to receiving the blessing of God. So, I can pray and travail and all that, and God may even be ready to release it. But what happens is, there is a hindrance. So I cannot walk in the full blessings of God, even if he wants to release it, because blockage is from my side, unholy life. Okay, And uh, we know that in the heightened presence of God, whenever we talk about revivals, we talk about um, you know the glory of God being manifest, there's great judgment. We read that in the Bible. For example, Acts chapter 5, you know, that's a place where you had a wonderful presence of God going on, happening, but you had Ananias and Sapphira, they lied to God. Unholy life. Okay? But were they part of the community which was seeking God's presence and blessings? Everything? Yeah. They just fell dead. That's like extreme. So, unholy life, um, yeah, you can't. You can't walk in the blessings of God, uh, even if you travail and cry out. Not because God doesn't want to give, but because there is a blockage from our side. Okay, that is the answer. The second one, you said travailing one person or few people, what is more powerful? Again, you see, these things depend on the, uh, on the cause that you are praying for uh, and the way Holy Spirit leads you. Sometimes, when you read stories of like Smith Wigglesworth and all that, so uh, there are times when Smith, he prays and uh, there is nobody next to him. Uh, there's one really amazing story that he goes to pray for a child and the child actually dies. Nobody is there with him. Uh, he tells the parents, I will, you come in the morning. Okay. I will pray for your child. Your child will be well. And in the night, the child dies. 
so he starts crying out to god and he says god what will happen now i'm the only one who's here they will think i killed the child everyone will come in the morning i don't know you raised this child from the dead okay some crazy stories like that but he's the only one he prays he travails you could say travails till morning that child comes back to life before the family comes in a dead child is back to life so um, you read about at least 11 resurrections that happened through the ministry of smith wigglesworth okay and uh, so in this particular instance he's the only one how can one person pray for resurrection don't you think 50 people should pray for it doesn't work like that you have to be led by the holy spirit even one person sometimes is fine but what we see in general is whenever it comes to things like um, you know uh, praying for the salvation of the city transformation of the city in that it is helpful when more people gather general also people used to say like this uh, yeah a group of people uh, it's if if we pray of a group of people means it is more powerful and yes 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 but even one person is fine uh, anand okay unless uh, like spirit of god shows you that more people must gather so even elijah only one person he prayed but the rain came so sometimes even one person it works okay yeah good questions uh, you had something to ask you know hmm okay uh, you're saying work hard and don't travel can you explain yourself uh, we can see on ha huh? so hmm. yeah got it ah good question okay fine i was just trying to find your uh, correct word in hindi just give me one minute huh? Anybody here knows what that word is? Hindi? Yeah. Go thakar. Okay, here I am looking at uh, the word. It says Okay, it says uh, kashtapurna kada parishram. Okay. But you associate it with uh, associated with childbirth that kind of suffering yeah that's a kind of suffering and yeah okay yeah it also said dukh uthakar uh, but see here's the point did jesus travel yes we saw that no jesus travel did paul travel we we saw that in galatians 4:19 he said right uh, a labor Uh, in childbirth till Christ be formed in you. Okay, don't even talk about Jesus. Talk about Paul. Is he part of the new covenant? He is. So he has authority. He has, um, you know, dominion. Uh, everything that the cross gives, the people in the new covenant have it. But Paul prevailed, no. So just because we have authority. Um, there are some prayers vimal without authority uh, without prevailing we cannot receive it even in the new covenant okay see sometimes what happens in our uh, prayer when we talk about faith we think everything has to be instant you know be healed in jesus name but the the reality when we study about Jesus and his ministry 
normally it was one step he commanded he spoke he touched they were healed they were healed they were healed immediately immediately it says like that so we are trying to reach that standard you know or to see the release of the anointing and all that but there are some things for example even jesus traveling in the garden of gethsemane when it comes to his death burial resurrection he traveled everything doesn't come under the category of instant immediately immediately so even in our prayer life there are things for example when it comes to ministry deliverance casting out a demon speaking healing we do expect we should come to a place where like jesus it's one step that is that's what we are moving towards we are pushing for that but there are other matters where we have to travel okay even even when it comes to these one step manifestations what i would say is we studied about the life of jesus how much he prayed lots how do we know that he did not travel in prayer before he went and healed someone for healing possible no outside it is one step but behind the scenes jesus would have travelled so there is a place for travelling under the new covenant even though we now have you know access to god and name of jesus all that travelling is there in the new covenant okay yes yeah you have a question oh online okay yes uh okay so nina has a question whatever it takes to fulfill god's purposes for example a church's mission to re reach the city of bangalore so we so we need to travel isn't it no matter how long it takes yeah will it help to have a vision or a burden and then we travel until then yes nina so um for a matter like the church's mission to reach the city we must travel okay uh, we must travel can we travel with a vision yes of course we can travel with a vision um you know god might give us a picture of something like there are churches being established in the city or or something like that some vision so you can keep that vision also and you can begin to travel for it okay yeah i think we have addressed that question Yeah, uh, if there are no other questions, we can wrap up the class. I think we have an idea, right? You have a picture of what travel means. Ah, uh, there's also a very powerful sermon which Pastor preached not too long ago. I think 2021. You can look it up in our online resources. Um, uh, very powerful. It's it's about traveling. Okay, so I would uh, greatly encourage you to go get that resource. Listen to that. sermon to encourage you okay we have uh, one minute left half a minute shawn half a minute on quick no no i said she must have travelled she must have travelled yeah just that i cannot give you a scripture to prove what i'm saying it's my opinion yes yeah correct correct hmm hmm okay see these these are um uh, praying in the spirit is it is it compulsory ha huh? okay 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 got it yeah so you can pray with great in intensity without even praying in tongues sometimes you're praying with intensity and in tongues is it clear okay it's possible yes 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 
Yeah, so it's not even about the duration. Yeah, it's about intensity. Okay, all right. So let's pray and close. Uh, I would request one of us to. The mic is here, so Vimal or Nikhil, anybody can pray and close. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for this time. Lord, thank you for uh, uh, Nancy, Mem, whatever she uh, teaches. Lord, help us to understanding everything, every words, Lord. Whatever we are learning and uh, follow them, these words, Lord. Help us to everything, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll meet again next week. Okay, so bye for now. God bless.